Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new kit to build for you guys today. This is the 135th scale M3 Grant from Tacom. Now, this kit just came out probably about just a couple of weeks ago now, and I've been getting lots and lots of requests from you guys to build some more British armor, so I thought this is a perfect, uh, perfect kit to start building up. Now, the reason I chose this one right here is I kind of had a, a little bit of a brainstorm idea. I want to do a little diorama, but first we'll build the tank to get that video done. But then secondly, uh, I, I have an idea for a diorama to do like a little oasis scene. And I started looking up some North African oasis that some pretty cool looking stuff. They're like set into the side of a hill with a really cool looking pond in the middle of it there with some trees and shrubs and stuff growing all around it. And I thought that would be a great thing to put up this up alongside that. Now, I plan on doing all that, so now if, if you don't ever see the video coming out, it's because it didn't turn out after all, but I think, I think we can get it to work. We've got some of the new uh, Woodland Scenics Deep Water, as well as uh, we'll use some of our pink foam and really do it up really nicely. So, But first we're going we're gonna to concentrate on the M3 Grant. I was looking inside, and I actually did a little review on it not too long ago. It's a pretty easy, straightforward kit to put together, so it should go together quick and easy, so let's get started on it. Okay, we've begun to start to assemble the lower part of the hull. And as you can see here, it is a bathtub style hull. The part of the sponsons are already glued into place, or molded into place, I should say. And then we can just attach some of the back pieces, which you can see there's some really nice rivet detail throughout the entire model here. Gotta get that to line up properly before that sets up. And the rivet detail, and that's actually one of the biggest downfalls of this vehicle during World War II, that if a, uh, a projectile was to hit this and didn't penetrate, the inside of all of these rivet heads would become nice little projectiles inside the vehicle as well. So welding was a much better way of uh, putting these vehicles together. So then after we get that bottom, the back part glued on, we can go ahead and glue the front of the transmission hub right on here. And we'll come back, get all those glued on, and show you on to the next step. Okay, these are the 15 parts that make up each one of the uh, the bogey assemblies. So I'm assuming because there are so many parts that the uh, each piece is going to each bogey is going to work. So I've, I've just cut them all off and cleaned them up. Actually, there's a tiny bit more cleanup I need to do on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble f the first one and come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've been working on some of the suspension pieces here, and as you can see, the suspension is completely workable once you get it done. Now, this makes for a lot of little tedious little parts and things that you need to glue together, and honestly, I'm going to, right after we uh, do this, I'm going to glue all this together anyway so it doesn't move. I want it to be uh, solid so we don't have any problems with it falling apart later on. Because anytime any of these pieces are, are loose like that, it's just setting it up to come apart later on. So we'll glue all this down into its proper position and we'll start attaching them to the hull. Okay, I've assembled one side of the bogey wheels, and since I am gluing them into a solid position, you want to make sure you're going to put all three on at the same time, elevate the piece up, and then you know make sure that all six wheels are touching the ground at the same time so you don't have any weird shapes or anything showing up. Okay, we have all of the, uh, the bogeys on here now, and the next step that they call out is to start assembling the tracks for the kit. And, I, and I've done this now, but I don't want to, to apply them onto the, the model yet. First of all, they give you a little, a little jig here to get the curve that goes up, and the rest of it are link and link tracks. So not very difficult to do. The last little section I have to do right here are five individual tracks. Actually, might be a few more than that even. And we'll, we'll try to make it so we can just paint them separately and then pop them on right after we're done. But uh, we're going to move on from that for right now. And the next step that it calls out after the tracks are adding some of the side parts on the side of, over the sponson. And as you can see right here, all of them are faceted. So it looks like they all fit fairly well. So I'm going to go ahead and attach 
the two sides here first as well as the two front fenders and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, what I thought I would do is we've got the, the sides and a little bit of the back start to get glued on. And I just wanted to point out a couple of things. First of all, all of these faceted pieces are fitting very, very well. And after we had, and I won't say it was a difficult time, there was just a lot of little pieces with the, uh, the bogies, uh, the bogey wheels. So all of that kind of was a lot of tedious little work, but all this other stuff is working out really well. Now, one other thing I'll point out to you, when you go to put these, these fenders on right here, Keep an eye, too, you've got to glue the fender to the top of the uh, transmission cover here, too. If you just push it straight down, your this front fender right here has a tendency to flare in, and it looks kind of crooked. So try to push it out as far as you can right to the edge of this transmission cover, and you'll get the, uh, the piece to be nice and straight on it. Just a little thing. I started to glue it on and didn't notice it right away, and luckily caught it before it dried because it, it started to really push itself in and flare out. Now, another thing I'll point out to you, too, is the idler wheel in the back as well as the drive sprocket. Now, they don't have poly caps in them, but they do pop on and off very easily. And this is going to be very handy because, like I was telling you with the tracks, the only way we're going to be able to get them on. Now, we're not going to put the side skirts on first, but even just getting these little pieces in there is going to be kind of difficult if they didn't come off. So, remember, don't glue your uh, drive sprocket or your your return or your idler in the back at all on because it'd make it much easier later to put the tracks on. So now I'm going to go ahead and start adding some more of the faceted pieces and we'll show you what that looks like when we're done. Okay, I've started attaching the side panels of the Grant here and as you can see there's lots of facets on this and we've attached the gun and the way the gun goes on right here you can adjust the gun and then the, uh, the sight moves with it. Now as I started to attach this top part to the to the sides there was a little bit of a fit issue but I was able to just grind down just slightly this little piece in here and everything will kind of click together but to ensure that everything's gonna fit we're gonna start with the front gluing this portion really tight and then kind of work our way around both directions so we get a really nice fit going around because there is quite a bit to try to line up all at once with glue so I think if we start on that first part we should should work out and I did have this snapped into place here a minute ago you can see it starts to go in so overall I think the fit is working pretty good you do have to do a little bit of adjustment here and there but uh, it is working out pretty well okay you can see we've got the entire top attached here and I've started gluing up the faceted pieces that make up the rear engine deck attach the photo X as well as the stowage bins on there and you'll see that this actually is probably the best part of the fit. It fits very, very well. So we'll have no problem gluing that into place, almost clicks into place. Once we get that glued on, we can go ahead and start attaching our exhaust, as well as all the other little pieces that make up the back, including the uh, two little hatches that will get glued into place here that make up the engine doors. So... The next steps that it's going to call out is to start attaching some of the, the rear fenders as well as the side fenders. Now we're going to leave all of these off right now because we do have to still install the tracks, of course. And we want to paint those and weather those separately. And this won't be much of a problem painting these and then gluing them on after the fact. So we will get the rear engine deck installed right now, all the exhaust, the doors, leaving off the, the fenders for right now. And then we can start working on the turret. Okay, you can see we've attached all of the uh, the bracing on top, any of the little extra photo etch pieces, put some of the rest of the hatches on, things like that. So that is all ready to go now. And I've been working a little bit on the on the turret. And the turret is very, very simple to put together. It's probably like a grand total of like 12 pieces completely. So it's just a matter of gluing the top and bottom together. It does have a hollow, uh, hollow slide molded main barrel. The machine gun barrels are not slide molded at all, so we will try to drill that one out just a little bit there. And then it's just a matter of putting this front piece on, and then of course putting gluing the barrel into place, and then we can go ahead and put this on. And we have 
principal construction done on the kit. And as like I said, I will glue all these pieces on. We have all of our track pieces ready to go, so they're ready to paint separately, and we'll put the fenders on after that. So I'm going to do a little cleanup sanding on the rest of the vehicle, glue the barrel on, and then we can go ahead and start painting. Okay, now I'm going to spray the entire vehicle in NATO black. And I like doing this for two reasons. First of all, NATO black is a great color to show for uh, the rubber that is going to be like on the tires on the inside here, as well as it works as a great shadow coat. And then it's also a great color to show off if you have any flaws that you need to repair later on. So we'll spray over this the whole entire vehicle in the NATO black, and we'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, we've completely sprayed the uh, the vehicle in NATO black to give it its shadow coat, as well as now we can check it out to see if there's any flaws that we need to repair. So we'll go over that. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the kit itself. Overall, the kit fit together very, very well, and actually wasn't very, very crazy on the number of parts. Now. As you can see right here, we've left off all the tools and any accessories that we're going to put on later on, as well as the tracks. Now the tracks I've painted up, or built up I should say, and then painted. And we've sprayed the entire thing with our NATO Black to do this double eye rubber pads on here. And then just around the edge right here, we sprayed our track color to give like the metal parts a little bit of tarnish. Now we're going to go back over in this and darken up this rubber part, as well as do some other weathering. But just wanted to give you an idea of what we're doing with it so far. Also want to point out, I had heard a few times too that there was the, the tracks are a little short inside here and I actually did run into that same problem. After assembling them the way the instructions say, I was one link short from getting them to meet up. Now you have a couple options because of that. This is a British tank, so it's going to have a giant side skirt up here. So you could leave that one extra link off right here at the drive sprocket. But it also does come with a uh, couple extra tracks on a like the accessories, like for spare tracks. So if you're not too worried about that, that's what I did. As I took the extra two track links, one on each side, put it in here, and that was able to make the, uh, well, actually it goes like this, make the, uh, the run complete. So just a little minor thing, but just thought I'd bring it up to you guys. Now, and also we've left off the side skirts and the, uh, the, the back uh, mud guards on here just to make it that much easier to get the, uh, the tracks on. And like I was telling you earlier, we're just going to pop the drive sprocket inside here. Uh, still don't want to glue this together until we actually get it on because you still want to have to manipulate it. I was kind of like practicing on it. You want to drag it from the back to the front, get the idler in place, then you can go ahead and snap the, uh, the drive sprocket in. But we're not going to do that for a little while. We're going to do a little bit more painting on the vehicle. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to end up doing the box art for color-wise, which is going to be like a tan color. The, the top of the entire vehicle will be a green, and there'll be a little bit of like a, a brown color that's been sprayed on there, just to break up the, uh, the silhouette of the vehicle. But all in all, like I was saying, is a very nice kit. It goes together really well. The, uh, the suspension has a few extra parts than I probably would have needed just to make it work, because I'm not going to ever make the, the suspension work. But... For those who want it to work, it's great. It's already inside the kit. The facets of the upper armor, I had heard a few people talk about that, that they had problem fitting it, but honestly, I had zero problem doing it other than having to sand just a tiny little piece over here in the corner, which took like, you know, 10 seconds to do. And after that, and just gluing it from the front and then working our way back, everything fit on really well. Okay, I've completed the highlight coat now using just uh, XF2 flat white. And we've gone over any of the areas that we want to pop out. Uh, it's supposed to be a desert vehicle, so you're expecting the paint to look a little faded. Now, for the paint job that we're going to paint for the base color, we're going to use a mixture of 60% XF57 buff and 40% XF59 desert yellow. And we're going to mix those two together and spray the entire vehicle and give it a nice base coat.
Now we're going to take our olive green and like the camouflage from the picture shows, just doing the very tops of the vehicle, leaving the sides still with the, uh, the tan color. Okay, you can see that we've uh, put the green on now, and I purposefully did not put on a very solid color. I wanted a little bit of the tan to be showing through, as if this was just haphazardly sprayed on, just as a quick camouflage. Now we're going to use our Flat Earth XF52, and we're just going to do a little bit of camouflaging on the side of the turret, as well as the side of the hull and the side skirts. Okay, once the paint completely dried, we've sprayed the entire model with lacquer clear coat. And now we're going to go ahead and do the decals. And a lot of you guys have asked me in the past questions on the decals. We're going to use Tamiya's Mark Fit Strong. And it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Just a matter of putting a thin little coat down where the decal is going to go. And then taking your decal that's been soaking for a little while. Just kind of get it into the right position. And then one little light coat up on top of it. And then in about, about four or five minutes, it's just as, once it mostly dries, just going over it with a cotton swab to kind of burnish it down and it'll stick really well. Now, once all the decals are gonna be put on, we're gonna dull coat the entire thing one more time and that is going to seal in our decals. That way the decal is laminated between two layers of lacquer and that will keep it from popping off in the future. Okay, now that the, uh, the clear coat has dried, we are going to take a little bit of our brown chipping color, which I'll show you the formula right in the corner right now, and just taking a torn piece of sponge, dab a little bit on, and then blotting the majority of it out on a paper towel. And then we'll be able to start going over some of the edges. And anywhere you want worn chips to start showing up on it. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer. I'm going to put a row down by the bottom here where you'd imagine rocks and dirt kicking up, tearing it off. So I'm going to go over the rest of the model right now and we'll start doing the chipping and we'll show you the next step. Now we're going to start to put some rust and streaking grime. We're going to use like actually four different types here. We've got a little light rust wash, a little streaking grime for Africa Core, which was like a gray color, a regular streaking grime, which is a real dark brown, and finally a streaking rust which is kind of a reddish brown color okay first thing we're going to do is put a light light coat of enamel thinner down on the areas that we're going to put the streaking grime and such and then just using a mixture depending on how you want to do it, you can put a small amount around some of the rivet heads And having the thinner down already really makes it flow really well. And then you can also do some streaks. And then just going back over it one more time with your, your brush that doesn't have as much thinner in it now. And just start to pull it down. I'm leaving a few little streaks here and there. So I'm going to use basically all four of those colors and go over the whole side of the vehicle, vehicle here and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, you can see we've weathered up the vehicle quite a bit here. And after I let all of the, uh, the enamel wash dry, we sprayed it with one more coat of dull coat just to seal all of that in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take XF57 buff and just from about 
18 inches away and just lightly mist over the entire thing with the buff to give it kind of a dusty effect and that'll kind of blend everything together for us. Now we're putting a little enamel thinner on the, the tracks followed up by just a little bit of our light sienna from Vallejo and we're just going to go over that and just put a little bit of a of a dirt between those double eye bar rubber tracks there and when it dries it'll dry completely flat and it'll look like a nice little dust of and we can knock off any of the excess when it's done well here we are here is our completed model we'll first give you a little look around the entire vehicle here Now I didn't put a lot of dust and dirt on it from the uh, the pigments yet and that is because in the next video when we do the diorama for it we want that to blend together and match the same colors that we're going to put into that. So I think this is a good point to stop off right here and this is more about building you got a little piece of fuzz right there. This is more about building the kit than, than anything else but I do like the way the uh, the weathering that we did do on it came out made it nice and beat up and worn like it was on a long patrol somewhere in North Africa so like I was telling you earlier the kit itself very very good quality this was a grand total of probably about about 30 hours of actual uh, construction time so nothing very difficult at all there was uh, no real fit issues other than that one little thing with the track I mentioned about, but that one extra track was is available in the kit, so not a problem at all. And I would definitely recommend this, this type of kit for any type of builder, from whether it be a new builder all the way up to obviously an experienced builder. But a new builder won't have any problems, I, I believe. You know, as long as you take your time and put it together properly, you'll get a, a very nice looking kit. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.